The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day mate, welcome back to Dyson Sphere with me, Jetty. And of course we've got Icarus here as well, because today we're going to be explaining the gravity matrix to you. Um, how to build it to ratio. Uh, this is of course the fourth video in this series. Uh, we have already done... Go away, inventory. Uh, we've already done a video on the actual uh, electromagnetic, the energy, the structural, and the information matrix. You'll find links to those up in the top right-hand corner or playlist down the screen and down in the description below and today of course we're going to be covering the gravity matrix now this this is a giant build okay i'll be perfectly honest with you if we rotate the build uh you can see my planet this is my cybertron planet it's it's something we've been doing over on twitch we have foundation to the whole planet and we're currently trying to build a dyson sphere slowly around our very very bright blue giant uh star and uh, it's a type O giant. It's super big. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I've divided my planet into quarters. And you can see that this particular build stretches from here to well past the one quarter of the uh, orbit of a planet. And um, it was built around the equator because I knew I'd need as much space as possible. It's not a small build. Okay. Uh, by all means, if you're curious on more details on this build, I will post all the ratios down in the description below. On top of that, you'll probably see them on the screen as we walk through the build. Uh, lastly, maybe, maybe on my Discord, by all means, there is links actually to Discord also down in the description and the top right hand corner. People I'm willing to be going to be sharing their screenshots of their current gravity matrix build because this is built to be as easy as possible for you guys to follow. It's not built to be compact or particularly neat at all. Uh, with that out of the way, we're going to go for a quick hike uh, with the light on to the far end of the build. Now, I have split the build as I've done previously into two different halves. We have the oil components on the left and the smelting on the right. So we're going to start with oil uh, purely because it's probably the easier half of the build to go through. I know, I know. So oil, main thing you're going to need from oil is going to be the uh, refined oil. You will also need titanium, but considering this is super, super late game, I am going to assume that you guys are at the stage where you have a uh, Mark III belt. So Mark III belt moves 30 items per second. I'm also going to assume you have sort of Mark III because they're super, super fast. I'm also going to assume that you're going to be using assembly machine Mark III's. Again, because they're super fast. These are the main reasons we're assuming. I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be using all these items. On top of that, by now you should have them all unlocked. So with that out of the way, let's cover the basics. So first thing we're going to have to cover is oil. Now, uh, I have two, four, six, eight, sixteen oil refineries. And as you can see, I'm splitting the products straight away to bring out our refined oil. I'm also taking the hydrogen and I'm just shipping off. We will need the hydrogen later, but not right now. Um, and now this build doesn't technically have enough hydrogen in it. Again, I've made some assumptions. One, you have already made uh, the... Uh, information matrix and the structural matrix and both of them had excess hydrogen okay so you can definitely use some of that hydrogen to bolster up the amount of hydrogen on, in this build on top of all that you also are probably at the stage where you're harvesting your local gas giant so hydrogen shouldn't be a problem so with those assumptions out of the way yes you will need to add a booster line of hydrogen as we continue down the build we'll get to that shortly uh but yes so we're gonna have our oil refined oil hydrogen okay refined oil is going to come down this side first thing we're going to do is it's going to be sulfuric acid sulfuric acid we're going to need three chemical plants uh that is going to require our water our stone and of course our refined oil next on our list oh, and as you can see i'm trying to keep these builds as neat as possible and as straight as possible so this is also where our stone belt ends we're finished with stone at this point don't need it anymore uh, and it also gives us a place to output our sulfuric acid which is going to go straight into our next build being our graphene our graphene we're going to need six chemical plants so one two three four five six uh, again it's going to need the uh, 
Energetic Graphene. Energetic Graphene, I remember its name. Energetic Graphene along with the Sulfuric Acid to make the Graphite. Uh, the Energetic Graphene, unfortunately, we need further down the build, so that belt's going to continue. Uh, at the same time, our Graphene, we don't actually need this in the Oil half. We need it over there in the Production half, so it actually just gets kicked straight out and it's ignored. We don't have to worry about it again. Okay, next one we're going to have is Plastic. Okay, so again, Refined Oil along with this uh, Energetic Graphene is going to output our plastic. Our plastic we need exactly... Hang on, I just got to look at my cheat sheet because this build is massive. Again, six machines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly six chemical plants to make our plastic. Okay, after we've got plastic, the main place our plastic is going to, along with our water and the last of our refined oil, is into the organic crystals. Again, we're going to need six machines, okay? So there's probably a reason to be able to do direct insertion from plastic to uh, the organic crystals. Um, I decided not to, mainly for ease, so you guys can see these builds laid out in long straight lines. Okay, so again, uh, organic crystals, six of, and that's going to stop both our water belt along with our plastic belt, along with our uh, refined oil belt. Okay, the last thing that's going to pass all the way through is our energy graphene, which is going to come over here to four smelters making diamonds. Okay, um, sort of in the wrong half of the build, but it, 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 it fitted nicely. So that finishes that build. Next up, we're going to cover our uh, organic crystals. They are just coming over here and finishing here into titanium crystals. Okay, titanium crystals, we're going to need 2.7 machines. Obviously, I've had to overbuild it just slightly uh, to three machines, but that finishes off the oil side. Okay, it's done, it's dusted. We'll come back to the booster hydrogen and a few other things later. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the start and repeat the whole process with. Uh, the rest of the solid materials. Now, you are going to need every different type of solid material, okay? You're going to need stone, you're going to need copper, you're going to need iron, you're going to need silicon, titanium, all of it, okay? You're going to need every raw resource. As it by now, you should be in the fairly late game. You should be able to have no real issues getting raw materials, okay? So, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need magnets. I need 12 smelters outputting magnets, okay? They only go to one building. We'll cover that shortly, but you're going to need 12 of them. Uh, next one is we're going to need 20 smelters making energy and graphene. Now, if I set up oil cracking, we could get energy and graphene from that. That is an infinite resource because we're using oil and we get extra hydrogen, which pr probably fix our hydrogen problem. But I did a quick look at the maths and it was like 80 plus refineries. Yeah, um, that's up to you guys. If you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. We're not doing it as part of this video. It was just too much. Okay, uh, next off, we have iron. We're going to need 15 smelters. Just, let's just double check the maths real quick. Uh, 15 smelters. 15 smelters needing iron. As you can see, iron goes off on its belt and it disappears. It's needed all throughout the whole build. Uh, next up, we have copper. Copper. We only need nine smelters. Okay, copper's done, dusted. We then have a high purity silicon. High purity silicon. High purity silicon is eight smelters. We have titanium. Titanium is going to be ten smelters. And then finally, we have that little stone line. You remember that one we're using for sulfuric acid? Turns out we need a little bit extra to make some glass. We're going to need four smelters to make glass. So. First thing we're going to cover is it's going to be our titanium and our glass are going to come join together with a touch of water to make titanium glass. Titanium glass, we're going to need 3.4 assemblers. So you can see the last one is not really outputting and it's all backed up because it doesn't need to run all that often. But it does need to exist to make sure the build stays in ratio because uh, that's really the biggest point about this build. It is all to ratio. Okay, before the sun sets on us, let's see whether we can walk down the planet faster than the sun sets. We have our uh, magnets along with our copper. I'm going to come here and go straight to magnetic coils. We're going to need, I want to say 2.7, oh, 2.7 in these guys. So again, three. Okay. Uh, one thing I will mention throughout this build is we'll get to it later on, but you might want to consider if you're going to copy this, increasing all the builds by about 10% to have some extra gravitational matrices to convert into warp cores. But we'll cover that. We'll cover that in more depth towards the end. Uh, next up, our iron and our copper are going to be combined into making circuit boards. We only need 0.7 of a machine. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, 0.7 of a machine. Not a lot. Really, really, really not a lot. Okay, you're not going to need a lot of these, but 
you're going to need at least a, a machine. Uh, next up, we're going to have gears. Uh, also, you might notice iron and copper continue right the way along. Our magnetic coils continue right the way along. So we're going to need them for a couple of items. Our circuit boards are using this belt, which we're going to slide along for quite some time, unfortunately, before we get to consume them. Okay. Gears, 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 gears. Uh, gears are 2.7 machines again. And as you can see, we're outputting those there and then you're consuming them straight away into electric motors. Electric motors are four, uh, 5.4 machines, okay? 5.4 machines. And as you can see, we're now outputting our electric motors onto this side of the belt. This is one of the advantages of using Mark III sorters. I don't have any issues with worrying about sorter speed. They're more than fast enough. Uh, okay, our copper belt continues. Our iron belt continues. We now have electric motors. They continue. Circuit boards continue. Uh, magnetic coils continue. Gears obviously stop. We're done with gears. They've all been consumed. They're good to go. Next, we're going to have the electromagnetic turbines. There we go. Um, they're going to use the rest of the electromagnets. They're also going to be using up all the uh, engines. So both those belts get to stop. Uh, they don't touch the iron or the copper belt. So they can continue straight through unobstructed. And we're going to need uh, 2.7 of these guys. So 2.7 of these guys to produce our uh, electromagnetic turbines. I can't remember the name ever. Uh, next up we have is silicon. So our silicon that we built all the way up there has done absolutely nothing so it's come down here to make microcrystalline components. I remember that name because it's really stupid. Uh, microcrystalline components, we need 2.7 machines. You're gonna find 2.7 appears a lot inside this ratio. I think it's because I'm using tier three assemblers. Had I used the tier two, which are nowhere near energy efficient enough, they would probably make the numbers a little bit more uh, a little bit more round. Uh, in saying that, I should explain that really quickly. Up until now, we've always used Mark 1 assemblers because they use 270 kilowatts. The Mark 2 uses considerably more at 480 kilowatts for a crafting speed of 1 compared to a crafting speed of 0.75 so not worth it. The crafting uh, assembly machine Mark 3 uses one well has a production speed of one and a half with 780 kilowatts worth of power which is exactly twice the crafting speed and about three times the power usage of the assembly machine mark one but it means every single build is going to be half the size this is why i chose an assembly machine mark three they make sense the mark two for the very 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 small performance increase it's like a 33 percent uh increase in speed it's consuming almost twice the amount of power really not worth it okay uh continuing on with our build we come to our cpus cpus we only need two of these guys okay they're gonna also finish off our circuit board uh, belt along with our microcrystalline components and as you can see because our silicon has ended we now have a room for a spot for them to output we still we still just for the record for the two items we need, being the uh, gravitational lens and the quantum chip, we haven't got a single end production item yet. We're still going. Okay. Next up we have is the particle containers. Particle containers are going to need copper. That ends our copper belt. At the same time, they're going to need the electromagnetic turbines. That ends that belt. On top of that, they're going to need uh, graphene. Graphene. So that is that graphene belt that we had up in oil. It had to duck across and come across to this build. And again, we're going to need 2. Point, I want to say 2.7. It is 2.7. 2.7 of these lovely machines uh, pumping out our particle containers, which are going to come to right here and end. Yep, that's as far as they went. To make cashmere crystals? No. No, they don't end. It's the graphene belt. The graphene belt ends to make the uh, cashmere crystals. The cashmere crystals are going to require the titanium crystals, which we made right here and we just brought straight across. They're also going to require the last of. It's buried underneath. I do apologize. I had to, I had to take something vertical, and it happened to be the titanium glass we made way back at the start. Yep, that's finally coming down to this build as well. Um, so yeah, the cashmere crystals uh, are going to need. The graphene, the titanium crystals, they also need hydrogen. So as you can see, we have our hydrogen belt from our oil, which comes down here. And then I'm just side loading in extra hydrogen, basically from off planet, okay? So I'm just bringing in a little bit of hydrogen, not a whole heap. 
and just side loading on the belt to make sure this belt stays full at all times because that's going to affect our cashmere crystals it's also going to affect our uh, deuterium build which we're going to get to in a second so yeah you, you're going to need a significant amount of hydrogen um i don't have the number in front of me uh well it's going to be 10 hydrogen per second for the uh deuterium and 12 per second for the cashmere crystal so 22 or almost a full blue belt like two-thirds full blue belt uh of hydrogen to keep everything running okay next up we have the plain filters okay this is these ones we're going to need eight of these and this is going to consume out our cashmere crystals we just made it's also going to consume out our uh titanium glass which we made way back at the start and again it's going to output onto the far side of the belt which finally means, from all the way down here, we can now make our quantum, uh, our quantum computers, quantum chips, which are going to need our processors that we made way back up here, which have had to kink out just so we had enough room to get all the different builds in. Uh, so it's going to finally consume our processors along with our plain material. It is plain. Plain filter, plain filter. So it's going to convert, uh, consume both those two materials to make our quantum CPUs. That is one of their two end products. So. We're 15 minutes in, I have no idea how many assemblers or smelters at this point, and we've made one of the two end products. It is, this build is a pain in the butt. Okay, uh, so stepping back just a little bit, we took our excess hydrogen, and I've brought it out here, and I've run it into uh, some mini miniature miniature particle colliders. Uh, and we're going to need five of these to produce enough deuterium. Basically, we need five deuterium per second. Now, I will link up the top right-hand corner a video I did on deuterium, how to get deuterium. Technically, we could use fractionators, and they would be much, much, much more both power efficient and resource efficient and everything else we would need rather than 22... 22 hydrogen per second we'd only need 17 um, so it does decrease the amount of hydrogen we need but it's a little bit of a pain to build and fractionators work on a one percent chance which for me trying to build an exact build to ratio didn't really work out for the video hence i use the particle accelerators because they have a fixed input and a fixed output for you guys, I'd actually recommend 120% build the fractionators. As I said, link uh, to that the video covering deuterium up the top right-hand corner. I'd recommend giving it a watch, even if you already have a deuterium build up and running, because it goes into more depth of why you use one machine over the other. Okay, with that out of the way, we're going to come down to our next set of particle colliders. Uh, these guys are going to make strange matter, which is going to consume the deuterium we had already at an allow alarming rate, because these guys need 10 every eight seconds, but it is still a significant amount. It's also going to uh, consume the particle containers. You remember that iron belt we had right back at the start? Oh, look, the sun's rising on our build again. Uh, iron belt right the way back there. That iron belt has traveled all the way down to finally get to right beside Icarus, and this is where it finally ends. Okay, so these guys are going to make strange matter. Strange Banner is going to come over here and be combined with the diamonds. You remember those diamonds I mentioned? Those four smelters over there turning uh, energy graphene into diamonds? Well, those diamonds come down here and combine with the Strange Banner to make gravitational lenses. And with all that out of the way, that is going to get you your uh, 10 labs. And this is the important one. Uh, the uh, 12 labs. The gravitational matrix takes 24 seconds to craft, which means you would assume we'd need 24 labs catch is you actually get two gravitational matrices per craft so you only need 12 labs hence we have our 12 labs here six high six high as you can see if we click on the top one uh it's fully buffered our uh, the other one's fully buffered we bring up our production stats over 10 minutes we can see we're still producing 60 per minute uh in my case we're just dumping into a box because we just want to see the build working we want to make sure it's all built to ratio and luckily enough it is now with all that said couple of things if i was to build this in my base that i would change would be i would definitely 120 percent i would definitely be changing over um, every single build and adding about an extra 10 percent in most cases it's going to be one extra assembly machine to most of the builds a couple of smelters blocks you might need two or three machines or two or three extra smelters but i would definitely add 10 percent extra to everything else 
because then rather than making 60 per minute, you'd be making 66, okay? Now, 66 doesn't sound like a big difference, but honestly, it really, really is. It means you can run all these labs plus another one or two on top, okay? Uh, and that extra six per second, oh no, six per minute, means you should have more than enough to actually make space warpers. Now, space warpers are something you're going to be getting into um, or probably already have up and running, depending on how well your green science, existing green science build is done, because you can make space warpers from the gravitational lenses. Now, space warpers from the gravitational lenses, perfectly fine, perfectly legitimate idea, go nuts. In saying that, they cost about four times as much, about three, three and a half times as much as making them from a gravitational uh, matrix because when we use a matrix we actually get eight warpers out of it which is one hell of a difference it is a massive difference so yes i would really recommend for every single build uh all the details you've seen on the screen just add 10 percent add just an extra machine to every every single build smelters you might have to add a couple but generally a extra machine you're set you're done and with that you should be able to make not only enough gravitational matrices to fulfill your science needs but on top of that you should also be able to have enough that if you slap down a couple of labs over here on the right with a simple pass-through belt so they're going to be consumed by these labs first and if there's anything spare they'll go into your overflow labs at which point they will then use them to make Gravi uh, to make gravitational matrixes which then you can just shove straight into actually i think i have no i don't have the resources can i make just on enough chance i can uh yeah literally run a belt straight past uh there run you input you input uh, have a machine right there into there and you are gonna sir, make uh, space warpers from gravitational matrix give you some power uh, give you a storage ca container honestly I put this straight into a logistics building and that would be your build so if I ever had any uh, spare gravitational matrices uh, any spare gravitational lenses, which I don't, and I never will, because the build is bu build is built to ratio. Then, yeah, I could have this machine run and make sure I had some spare warp pops, of course. So, with all that said, that's really where I'm going to leave the video. If you found the video helpful, by all means, click the like button. I'd very, very much appreciate it. Same time, it definitely helps promote the video to other people that are probably struggling with the exact same problems that brought you to find this video in your YouTube feed. Uh, at the same time, if you're new here, I'd very, very much appreciate it if you click the subscribe button. Uh, lastly, like I said, there is links down in the description for uh, both my Twitch along with my our, our Discord server. Like I said, very, very active with Dyson Sphere, Dyson Sphere players. Uh, lastly, there is probably a playlist on your screen right about now. The playlist is all the different tips and tricks and tutorial videos I have done on Dyson Sphere already. Like the one we had just covering just how warpers, how warpers can be made, can be used, can make sure your interplanetary uh, network and system runs efficiently. And more importantly, how to get them around your base without spending a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um manually moving them because that's how i have seen some people have been getting these things around and wow we automated that so fast uh at the same time there's videos in there like as i said like about deuterium and that sort of stuff so with all that said thank you guys so much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed and i will see you guys in the next video all right bye